Welcome back, trainers. Uh, welcome to your Teams of the Week segment number two, week two. Uh, with me, as always, is Richard Haynes. Hey, guys. Uh, and I am Drew Adam. Again, we are bringing you the Teams of the Week segment uh, that we did last week. Uh, I want to thank those of you who uh, let us analyze your teams and those of you who gave us some feedback. Uh, let us know what you thought of it. Um, I know Joe in particular said he actually enjoyed the takes we had on his team, so we appreciated that. And, yeah, if you uh, want to leave us comments, say if you like something, say if you disagreed with something or whatever, that's always appreciated. Uh, we like to know that this segment is valuable to you guys and that you are getting a chance to watch it, and we want to see what you guys think. So if you have anything to say, let us know in the comments. Uh, yeah, other than that, let's get right to it. Um, so this week we are covering, uh, I think I went over it last week, Zachary O'Connor with the Speedwagon Foundation, Matt Blacka with My Name is Blacka, uh, Gordon with Pittsburgh Porygons, and DJ Challingsworth with Swana Lake. Uh, so our first team is Zach O'Connor with the Speedwagon Foundation, and his Pokemon are Greninja, Chansey, Howlucha, Cloyster, Aerodactyl, Heracross, and Toxicroak. So, Richard, what are your, what are the first things that stand out when you see this team? The first thing I noticed was actually he has three different fighting Pokemon on his team. So if he's got seven Pokemon to choose from and has to take six of them, he always has to take at least two of them. So that puts a little bit of predictability in what types he's always going to be bringing. Um, he's got some definite weaknesses to electric Pokemon. Um, fairy Pokemon will also give him a hard time. And I believe he has a weakness, some issues with fighting Pokemon as well, particularly with Cloyster and Chansey who are, by the way, really his only walls. So so what can he do about some of those weaknesses? Some of the, what did you say, he had a fairy weakness, uh, yeah. kind of so, an electric weakness. I mean, Greninja can kind of swap the different types with Protean, but my main recommendation for this team is that he has fast Pokemon with Aerodactyl having like base 130, Greninja being pretty quick, Palucha with the unburden ability being pretty quick, that he just sets himself up, runs really fast, and just tries to mow down his opponent before they can do anything else. Yeah, three of his Pokemon, uh, Greninja, Palucha, and Aerodactyl, are all uh, plus one, or at least 115 base speed. Um, yeah. And Cloyster, obviously, if you can get a Shell Smash on it, is you know pretty fast too. I think that would bring him up to like technically base one ten or something like that. Yeah, no, I think he, yeah he gets to like almost five hundred speed, so he's he's yeah. really really fast with a Shell Smash. Um, so yeah, you can you do have those defensive weaknesses um, to electric to fairy types, but I don't think he's n unable to deal with any of them offensively. Right, but he does only have. He has five physical attackers and one special. So Greninja is going to be held down using uh, coverage moves, but everything else is kind of up to him. Right. Yeah, I think I think he has the potential to uh, run into some problems with some really difficult walls like a Skarmory, um, anything that's a really physical wall that can stop him in his tracks. But there aren't Skarmories on every team. <laughs> so... If he does run into physical walls, um, for the most part, he can he has the coverage and the offensive, just sheer offensive power to break through through them. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is a really fast team, a really powerful team. Honestly, he has. Let's see, Halucha, Cloyster, Toxicroak, all of them can. Uh, learn Swords Dances or Shell Smashes or any of those to set up and just do massive amounts of damage. So if he can, if he does run into a wall, uh, there's a good chance he's going to be able to break through it as long as he doesn't get paralyzed or burned. Right. Um, thinking about it now, uh, if he does get paralyzed, a lot of his Pokemon are crippled by that. But he does have a Chansey, and that's going to be able to run a Heal Bell or Aromatherapy. Yeah, that's Chansey's going to have to play Cleric. Yeah, yeah. Chansey's got to play cleric. Um, not a lot of 
on a hyper offensive team again i talked about this earlier but you kind of need rocks to break sashes and i think it's only rocks eligible pokemon are chancy um and, and aerodactyl is yeah i think aerodactyl can he's really fast so yeah aerodactyl know. used to be used yeah aerodactyl used to be used as a uh, taunt stealth rock lead a lot in gen 4 but but at the same time, I think with this kind of team, you might want to run Aerodactyl mostly offensively still uh, to maintain that pressure. Because yeah, it might be necessarily just to just to throw up the Stealth Rocks, though. So. Yeah, I, I think in the team I mocked up for him, I think I had Chansey actually running Stealth Rocks, which is definitely possible. Um, trying to think, yeah. Yeah, I had Chansey. Well, let's, yeah, let's go to the set real quick. We can start off with that... Uh, da, 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 da. So, there we go. So, yeah, I had Chansey on this team. Uh, Chansey's really the main wall on this team. Can really take special threats well uh, and physical threats reasonably well with uh, full physical investment in Eviolite. Um, but uh, it's really the main wall. So, if Chansey dies, it's all on the offensive Pokemon. Um, I have Chansey running Seismic Toss because you don't want to be complete taunt bait and you got to do some damage. Uh, aromatherapy, uh, because like we were talking about, if you get paralyzed or burned for that matter uh, with any of your main sweepers on this team, then aromatherapy is going to save your life that way. Um, since Chansey can learn Stealth Rock and it's important to break sashes uh, and get some chip damage on Pokemon, uh, Stealth Rock's really important on this team, so I have that. And then Soft Oil for your typical recovery. Um, any thoughts on that set or any things you would uh, add? I think I suggested Wish, being a Wish pass, Passer instead. Okay. Soft Boiled Wish, they're basically the same thing, except Wish can pass to other people. Yeah, Wish, wish is a good move, um, and I think... I think if you didn't need the Stealth Rocks and the Aromatherapy, I probably would have put Wish. But uh, Wish Passing is great, but I think maybe the priority here is to keep Chansey alive since Chansey is your one and only wall and your Cleric. So, yeah, Wish is definitely an option. You might want to throw it on there and see what see what you can do. I also have uh, Thunder Wave on Chansey as well just to maybe cripple anything else that might stop uh, his sweepers from doing what they need to do. Yeah, Thunder, Thunder Wave isn't a bad idea, um, but his, his sweepers are so fast that I don't know that Thunder Wave is, you know, it's, a, it's good to have, but I don't think it's even completely necessary since his sweepers are so fast. Very, very little is getting through to his sweepers or beating his sweepers out speed-wise except for priority moves. The theme this week for all of my suggestions is going to be Thunder Wave, Thunder Wave, Thunder Wave, <laughs> Thunder Wave. Yeah, so yeah, Thunder Wave is always an option, never a bad move, but Chansey has a lot of things that it can do, a lot of things on this team that it needs to do uh, because this team is so offensive, he, and it's basically his only pure wall. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, you got to decide what your priorities are with Chansey and just go from there. Um other sets that I wanted to run by, one of them was Halucha. Um, it's a fairly typical Halucha set, but Richard and I were discussing it a little bit. Um, basically, you pull off a Swords Dance if you can on a switch. Uh, you throw out a Sky Attack, which uses your Power Herb, and then from there you have Acrobatics and High Jump Kick to just kind of clean through teams. It's a really threatening offensive set. Uh, and it's really going to break through a lot of walls if you can get a Swords Dance or two up. So that's a that's a pretty typical set. I think Aerodactyl, I had running a Choice Band. Again, you can run Stealth Rocks, you can run Roost. Uh, there's a really interesting set that I've used before. Uh, it's It has Whirlwind, Roar, Rest, and Sleep Talk. Um, and essentially it's just a super phaser where you fall asleep, use sleep talk, and that ignores the negative priority of phasing moves and you just phase people around. Not very good, not very practical or useful, but it's fun. Um, but yeah, for this, I would use a choice band. Uh, try to just get whatever coverage you can out of ice fangs, crunches, earthquakes, any of those. Uh, you can run aerial ace, you can run fire fang, but basically your choice band is gonna 
be your most effective set since Aerodactyl so fast and has decent power, but definitely the choice then helps him out. Uh, and then the last set I was going to suggest was a Substitute Sword Sans Toxicroak. This this throws people off a little bit. Um, Toxicroak is very powerful, but you know you don't necessarily see Substitute on him. Um, and one of the best ways to deal with a Toxicroak is to burn him or paralyze him. With Substitute, you can ignore both of those. Um, you set up a Substitute or Swords Dance. Uh, once you're behind a Substitute, uh, you lose some HP. So if you can Drain Punch, you gain some of that HP back. Um, and people are also forced to attack you when you have a Substitute. So you can just throw a Sucker Punches out there, um, knowing that they'll be attacking you. And you'll be able to get that damage on. So, were there any final notes on that team for you, Richard? Um, I think over top of Toxic Croak, I suggested Heracross instead, being that uh, Toxic Croak has a fighting and the poison. Halucha already covered that fighting type, and Greninja's probably running Gunk Shot anyway, so I thought the poison and the fighting at the same time were kind of overlapping. Redundant, and yeah. Because he's going to be dealing with a lot of psychic types as well, because of his fighting, all the fighting Pokemon he has, Mega Horn is probably going to work really well here. So it gives him a bug type. It also runs knockoff, and he can run close combat, earthquake, or whatever other coverage moves he wants to. But yeah, would you would you say a choice scarf set with Heracross? I actually went with the Toxic Orb Gut set, but ah, uh, okay. Um. He also has Moxie, so if you can get him moving, then maybe Moxie's the way to go. Yeah, no, I, I do like the uh, Toxicorp Guts set. If you can set up a Swords Dance with that, or just go straight out, you're doing a ton of damage with that thing. So yeah, Heracross, Heracross is definitely an option for this team. Uh, basically, those fighting types are interchangeable with whatever you want to use on that team. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's all for the Speedwagon Foundation. Uh, do you have, or, or did you have any final notes on that? Basically, set up, unleash, hyper offense. Hyper offensive play is probably the name of your game. Um, you can use Chansey and Cloyster to take up some hits for you, but other than that, you're just going to be punching as hard as you can. Yeah, you you have a scary team, uh, one that's going to be making people worry how they're going to deal with all these kinds of offensive threats. If you start to play too defensively, uh, you're going to give them the upper hand. So as long as you just keep maintaining offensive pressure, keep doing damage, don't switch a whole lot, you're, you're going to be winning some games. Okay, so the next team is Matt Blacka with My Name's Blacka. We have not had the privilege of seeing any of his Pokemon in battle yeah. yet. Um He's been, you know, going to concerts and throwing birthday parties and, you know, having a damn good time. So, Black, I get on your battles. We look forward to seeing what your Pokemon can do. Uh, his Pokemon are Sylveon, Conkwilder, Blastoise, Togekiss, Diggersby, Gallade, and Dublade. So, what are your thoughts on this one, Richard? Um, my initial impression is that. His team is a little on the slow side, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, as long as he can take care of that using Thunder Waves. There, there it is again, Thunder Waves. Um, in order to allow Pokemon like Togekiss, Sylveon, and Conkeldur to just do their thing, they all do something different. Sylveon smashing with Hyper Voices. I chose the Choice Specs Hyper Voice. Conkeldur just hits really hard physically, and Togekiss for our favorite pair of flinch shenanigans. Yeah, we saw Pingle run a Life Orb Togekiss last year in the finals against me, which was surprisingly effective. It was really the biggest Pokemon I had trouble with. Um, so that is definitely a good option. Life Orb Togekiss uh, takes some people for a surprise. He has excellent coverage with his moves, Air Slash, Dazzling Gleam. Or a sphere, flamethrower, any of those um, gives you great coverage. So that's an option, but I have always loved the Paraflinch set. Like you said, Thunder Wave really supports Blackest team well uh, because it's on the slower side. So if you can throw Thunder Waves out there with Togekiss, Paraflinch, a couple things to death, you're going to piss some people off and have fun <laughs> doing it. 
I think I also gave Gallade Thunder Wave as well. Uh, not any particular reason, just another Pokemon to be using it. Yeah, Gallade can run, I think, Will-O-Wisp or Thunder Wave. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, can run a, sh a Sword Stance, a Bulk Upset, Shadow Sneak, Zen Head, but Close Combat. Gallade's got a lot of things he can do. Um, I think in my team that I mocked up, he was kind of the odd man out. Um, but, you know, you can drop Blastoise, you can drop Dumblade. Uh, if you really want to get Gallade in there, because he is a good Pokemon and a versatile Pokemon that can do a lot of things. Yeah, my my thoughts are that he, he has three Pokemon that each do different things. Um, a very strong offensive Pokemon, a strong specially offensive Pokemon, and another one for that gimmicky pair of flinch hell that we all know and love. <laughs> so my thought was that if you can get yourself set up in order to use those three effectively, I mean, Diggersby is going to be doing damage. I have doubly chosen um, as a, a defensive wall, but using those three are what I would think would be your best option for just dealing the most damage and clearing out your other team, the other team. Now I know uh, the podcast with our our beloved admins Jeremy and Peasley. Uh, talked a little bit about Sylveon and Togekiss both being fairy types. What do you think about using both of them on the team? Would you drop one of them, or would you use both of them? I would use both of them every time. I've always had trouble with Togekiss, um, not even just because of Paraflinch. I always just felt like I didn't have something to deal with it effectively. Sylveon hurts. There's no doubt about that. With Pixelate, uh, with Choice Specs, Hyper Voice on top of Stab. We're talking about an attack that has absurd amounts of power on top of a pretty decent special attack stat. So I feel like as long as he has them both, he should be using them both. Yeah, the I, other option is to include either Blastoise or Gallade on it, or Double Aid on his team. And one of those guys are certainly a weaker link than Sylveon and Togekiss. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think they're both excellent Pokemon. Like you were talking about, Togekiss is hard to deal with. He doesn't have a weak stat. He's, he's one of those Pokemon... I'm trying to think who we were talking about last week. Tangrowth. Tangrowth doesn't really have a weak stat on him except for speed. Um, but Togekiss, both of his defenses are excellent. His special attack's excellent. His HP's good, and his speed is decent. He, you, you can't not use Togekiss. And Sylveon was your first draft pick, um, and is just a really solid Pokemon. So, yeah, I would agree with using both of them. Fairy type is not exactly weak defensively. It's not going to, you know, give your team, the other team, a lot of weaknesses to exploit. Um, steel and poison aren't too common attacking wise. So, yeah, I would, I would have to to absorb up those steel and poison type attacks anyway. Right. Yeah, I would I would definitely think about always using Dublade. Um, I know he was your last draft choice. I know he's, you know, unevolved. Um, and he's no Iga Slash, but I think he's actually a really solid Pokemon with with Eviolite. I think um, he's in underused if yeah. he actually cares about that. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've seen him a time or two in OU. Um, he's definitely used in UU. Uh, but yeah, he's he's a really solid Pokemon. His typing is just so good that you can't not use him. Um, right. He's he's going to cover your fairy weakness so well, um, and he's got some things he can do. He's not useless despite being an unevolved Pokemon, and not as good as Agaslash. All right, so we'll go ahead and go to some of the teams. Laka. Yeah, I had Gallade. Gallade was my unused Pokemon here, but I would definitely recommend using Gallade over Blastoise occasionally or Dublade if you feel like you can afford to do that. Uh, yeah, Togekiss is the typical uh, Air Slash Thunder Wave set. You throw a Flamethrower or a Sphere or Dazzling Gleam in there for cover coverage. Uh, throw a Roost on there, Leftovers, and you're sitting pretty. You are gonna you can spread Thunder Wave really easily. Um, and like we've said numerous times, you can use Air Slash to flinch people to death and frustrate them to no end. Uh, I usually run them physically defensive. Uh, you can run them specially defensive based on the needs of your team and what your opponent is running. 
But yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with Togekiss. Uh, for Conkledur, uh, probably his most common set this generation is the Assault Fest set. Uh, and I really think it's probably the best set he can run. He can run a bulk up set as well, uh, which will obviously increase his physical attack and physical defense. But he, his physical defense is already pretty good with an Assault Fest and max HP investment. He's really strong defensively on both sides uh, and hits pretty hard too with Drain Punch, uh, Knock Off, Ice Punch, and Mock Punch. Um, can really deal with some sweepers who have been weakened. So if you have something that you've knocked down to a Sash, if you have something like uh, Dark type, like a Bisharp that's got Swords and Sis set up and is sweeping through your team, Mock Punch is a great safety valve for that. Uh, so. Conkledor's a really solid Pokemon. You can use a couple different sets with him, but I like the Assault Fest set. I think uh, that's Dub what I went with. Go ahead. I said I think that's what I went with, too. Yeah. I, Iron Head, or not Iron Head, you had uh, Ice Punch, but I, I picked Earthquake, but again, just coverage. Yeah, go go with the uh, coverage that you think you're going to use the most if you're not switching up your team a lot. Uh, since, you know, Black is a little bit slow at doing his battles and doesn't put too much effort into this league, as we all know. Uh just pick something that you're going to go with for every battle, Blackout, and just, you know, see how it goes. See if you can win any games this season. Uh, so, Dubblade, uh, we've discussed a little bit. Uh, Rachel and I had different sets for this. Um, I had a Sword Stance set uh, that uses Iron Head, Sacred Sword, and Shadow Sneak. Uh, and what's interesting about this set, I think, are the EVs. Uh, you want to obviously max out your attack because once you get a Swords Dancer 2 up, uh, he's going to be really powerful. But if you throw a lot of investment into Special Defense, which is really weak on Dubblade, uh, with the Eviolite, his defense is reaching about 500 and Special Defense is reaching about 300, which makes him a decent tank on both sides. Normally, it's easier to deal with him on the Special side, but... In this case, he can take hits pretty well on both sides. Uh, so what, what did you want run for this one, Richard? Instead of a more offensive set with Dubblade, I actually ran a Sleep Tox set using Iron Head and Toxic as the other two moves. Originally, I considered using Gyro Ball instead of Iron Head, but because I was intending to spam Thunder Waves everywhere, I felt that that kind of made Gyro Ball a moot point, and so Iron Head was chosen to be the uh, the attack of choice. Um, with Toxic hitting things that Double Aid probably can't um, with Iron Head. But certainly your offensive set is probably more viable considering um, he probably doesn't want to be toxicking a whole lot of things with um, sleep talk randomly choosing it for him. Yeah, yeah, I, I I think that's a good set. Rest talk is definitely a good option to give him some recovery since he doesn't have recovery with leftovers since he has to run Eviolite. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot of things that Double A can do. He's a surprisingly versatile Pokemon despite being um, unevolved. Uh, the last set that I suggested was Agility Diggersby. I think we've seen Diggersby a couple times in the past. I know Pingle was running a Choice Scarf set last year or last season. Uh, but one of the best things about Diggersby is that his neutral coverage with the turn and Earthquake is so good. Um, so if you can't use both of them, if you're locked into Earthquake, Flying types wall you. If you're locked into Return, Steel types wall you. But if you don't lock into either of them, uh, you have potential to sweep through a team. Um, so if you can set up an agility late game, um, Return and Earthquake are going to give you excellent coverage. I was thinking about this earlier, and I think there are only four Pokemon in this league that are not uh, that will resist a Return and Earthquake coverage. Um, Trevenant and Gorgeist and Skarmory. Uh, and then there's one other one that I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, basically you're you're getting all the coverage you need from those two moves. Uh, so in your third spot, you can put Wild Charge to deal with Skarmory. You can put Ice Punch or Fire Punch to deal with Trevenant and Gorgeist. Uh, or if you want to, you can also run Sword Stance in that spot. If you get the chance to set up an Agility and a Sword Stance, Diggersby is nearly unstoppable. 
Um, Would Gengar be that other Pokemon you're looking for? Gengar, yeah. Gengar is the other Pokemon. There we go. So for Gengar, you could also run Knockoff. Uh, and Knockoff is always a solid option on Diggersby. Um, run a Life Orb on him, because that's going to help just boost your power even further. And Diggersby isn't, is by no means weak, but anything that's trying to sweep through teams late game is going to use that extra power. Um, obviously run huge power on them and just max attack and speed. Uh, and Adamant Nature is going to definitely be better for him because agility is going to boost your speed more than enough. And you're going to need all the power you can get with huge power uh, to get him off and running and sweeping through teams. All right, so what are your last thoughts on this team, Richard? Spam Thunder Wave, please. <laughs> what, what I think Richard is trying to say is uh, <laughs> spread Thunder Waves. Uh, use your bulk to not stall out teams, but uh, survive teams, uh, do some damage. And then you have some sweepers that are solid, like Diggers B, uh, Double Aid can be a sweeper, Ag Slash can be a sweeper, Sylveon, Conkleder they can all do some sweeping too if you give them the right opportunity. That's the wordy version of how I would have said it. <laughs> Instead of just spam Thunder Wave, which is also yeah, a strategy. Wave. It's also a strategy. Nobody likes Thunder Wave. Or at uh, least it have not being used on you. Uh, Electivire likes Thunder Wave. Touche. <laughs> all right, so our next team uh, this week is Gordon. Gordon, our beloved... Uh, program creator uh thanks again gordon for that program it made this league a lot of fun the season's going to be a blast and the draft was great uh so gordon got to draft the first pokemon of the draft uh not sure if there was any foul play involved in that but uh he got iga slash as his first pokemon uh he got gothitelle klefki staraptor gudra chestnut and kabutops so what are your thoughts on this team? Well, he has Aegis Slash. <laughs> that's that's all you need, right? Yep. Uh, again, I felt like if he could spam Thunder Waves all over the place, then Aegis Slash would be in a better position to break walls and possibly start sweeping under the right conditions. So spam Thunder Waves. Who, who are you spamming Thunder Waves with on this team? I'm using Klefki because of the Prankster and... <laughs> Gothitelle also has access to Thunder Wave. So it was possible to use both of them to spam Thunder Wave effectively. And Gothitelle could be a little bit bulkier than Klefki. Does Gudra have access to Thunder Wave? No, no. That's, that I, is... think, I think Gothitelle was the only one after Klefki. Did, did you make sure to check who all had Thunder Wave on each team? That was wasn't it? the point, but... It... <laughs> It did eventually happen. <laughs> Since that's the theme of this week. I did not realize Galave learned Thunder Wave until about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> now now we all know, so <laughs> beware. Um, okay, so Thunder Wave's definitely a good idea on this team because, you know, you have Eigen Slashes, Gudras, Chestnuts, which are a little slower. Um, anything else that stands out to you about this team? Oh, uh, let's see. Not particularly. Gothitelle, Chestnut, and Gudra can act as some walls. Klefki a little bit, too. And other than that, I mean, he's got Aegis Slash. That's all you need, right? Yeah, pretty much. I know at the in the draft you were mentioning a little bit, uh, bring fire types against Gordon. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Yes, I remember that. There, there does seem to be a little bit of that fire type weakness. I'm going to go ahead and pull up. Uh, the weakness analysis here. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of fire type weakness, a little bit of an ice weakness, which I didn't even think about till now. Uh, but with Chestnut, Gudra, and Soraka, you do have that. Um, and I, at first, I see a little bit of a dark weakness on Gothitelle and Igaslash. Um, but you do have Klefki to absorb those. You have Chestnut to absorb those. So you can deal with those a little bit better. You do not have a rocks weakness, which is. Mildly important. Star, I mean, Rap have, Star Raptor is the only thing, yeah. Everybody else is fine. Yeah, that definitely helps. Uh, but yeah, pretty pretty good defensive coverage on there. I don't know if we got a chance to see that. But um, the only thing that he doesn't cover really well are Flying Fire, 
ghost, ice, dark, and fairy. But everything else he covers extremely well. Um, definitely got some good defensive Pokemon in Aegislash. Uh, Chestnut, I think, is really underrated defensively. I've gotten to use him a little bit before. And he makes a pretty decent physical wall. Gudra makes a good special wall. Yeah, you got a solid all-around team here. So if we go ahead and move on to some of the team-building aspects. Uh, Aegislash, Richard and I have talked about a lot in... You all know what Aegislash can do. He's an extremely versatile Pokemon, extremely good defensively and offensively, and just can do a ton of things. Um, I have always wanted to see in this league a mixed Aegislash. We've mostly seen uh, physical Aegislashes. Richard has run a special one a time or two. Uh, but I'm not sure if mixed Aegislash has ever really been used a whole lot. I definitely uh, didn't use him myself for the first two seasons. Yeah, and the thought the thought behind Mixed Aegislash is kind of, uh, when he switches into Blade form, he has base 150 attack and special attack. Not just one or the other, he has both. Uh, without an investment, there's, you're still hitting really hard, but if you invest in both, you're doing a ton of damage, either physically or specially. And Mixed Walls are always good, because they let you break through Pokemon like Chansey or Skarmory, which are really only defensive on one side or the other. Um, so in that case, you can break through them with Aegislash really easily. Um, the set I have here runs Shadow Claw, Flash Cannon, Sacred Sword, and Shadow Ball. It runs a Life Orb. Uh, you'll notice that one thing from that is missing from this set is King Shield. Uh, essentially, the thought behind this set is you don't use King Shield because you're going to be coming in, taking a hit in your Shield form uh, with your great coverage or yeah, your great defensive coverage. Um, Firing off a move that's going to hurt whatever comes in a lot. Um, and then you're switching out to get him back into blade form instead of using King Shield. Now, of course, you could run King Shield on that, uh, but it's it, it hampers your uh, coverage a little bit. Um, and so this, this is kind of a, a pivot, if you will, an offensive pivot, where you bring it in, do some damage, and switch out to put him back into blade form. Um, and just keep switching him in as much as possible so you can keep doing massive amounts of damage. So, Richard, I know you had a different set for Aegislash. What what do you like to run since you got to run him for two seasons? I, I, I typically enjoyed using the weakness policy set here because Aegislash is so defensive when it's in its shield form that you can't help but try and hit it with one of its weaknesses. And when you do that, you make Aegislash that much more difficult to uh, to handle, especially if you have the Thunder Waves or the Speed Control that you wanted. Does Star Raptor learn uh, Tailwind, by the way? I don't know why he wouldn't. Uh, I've never checked. I've yeah, never considered. absolutely. Yeah, he um, learns Tailwind. That is another option for you. Um, because I know we suggested that with Talonflame, and I believe he used it. He used uh, who? Who is that? Uh, was that DJ? Was that? Or, I'm not DJ. I'm sorry. It was JP. Too yeah, too I think it was from Hearts. Yes. Yeah, it was JP. I saw him use it in his battle. Um, he used he it on Talonflame, and I don't remember if he won or not. I think he might have. I think he might have won because he came in late game with Exploud, like you said. Uh, fired off some boom bursts under Tailwind and really did some damage. And that's why you guys should listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he, he, he took our advice and it really paid off for him. Um, and he, but anyway, he played it extremely well too. Off this tangent, uh, but with weakness policy, you can run either a special set, a physical set, or you can do the mixed set as well since it increases both stats by one or two levels. Two levels. So you have yeah. a plus two, plus two, Aegislash. Uh, if you run something like Shadow Sneak, Sacred Sword, Shadow Ball, King Shield, um, you can hit on both sides of the spectrum after taking an attack. Uh, so, so maybe with if you use Gotha Telling Klefki for Thunder Wave, Star Raptor for uh, Tailwind, I've never seen that set before, so I don't know how it would work. But Aegislash could definitely wreck 
even with your set, Drew, just by switching life orb out for weakness policy. Yeah, there's there's a lot that Aegis Lash can do. Um, so keep it keep it fresh, mix it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, another Pokemon that I really like on his team, uh, Gothitelle. It was actually much higher up in the draft than I thought it would be in the auction. Um, but it's really solid Pokemon. I know you just because of its ability in Shadow Tag. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with Shadow Tag. Like Richard said, you can run Thunder Wave. You can run Toxic. I, he might learn Will-O-Wisp, I think. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do. What I liked, or I've never used Gothic Double before, but what I would propose to do is try a substitute Calm Mind set. Uh, run him with all physical defense and HP. Uh, and his... Uh, physical defense is 316, which is really high, and the special defense is naturally pretty high, too. Uh, so if you run that, you set up a calm mind or two, uh, and it's going to be really difficult to take Gothitelle down. If you have substitute, and you throw that up in front of status, you can't be burned, you can't be toxic, you can't be thunderwaved, uh, and that makes Gothitelle even harder to take down. And lastly, if you switch into a Pokemon that can't hurt Gothitelle, uh, you have Shadow Tag. They cannot switch out if they are not a ghost type. You can go ahead and substitute and set up six Calm Minds if you get the chance. Uh, if they can't touch you, uh, Gothitelle is behind a substitute, is really bulky on both sides, and has the potential to sweep through teams. Uh, you run Psy Shock, uh, Shadow Ball, or Hidden Power Fighting, or something in that second slot. Uh, and you're off and running. If you have six Calm Minds in the substitute, nothing's going to have an easy time taking anything from Gothitelle. So, another set that we talked about, uh, Richard talked about using Tailwind on Star Raptor, which isn't a bad idea even on this set instead of U-Turn maybe. Uh, but a Choice Band on Star Raptor with his ability Reckless uh, is going to pump Brave Bird and Double Edge up to really, really high levels. Uh, you have close combat for coverage, and if you uh, have U-turn to mo maintain momentum, uh, and also cover some, you know, psychic types, dark types, any of those. Uh, mm -hmm. Choice Band Star Raptor is going to clean up really well for you. Um, he has decent speed, uh, not really high, but pretty pretty good speed. If you run a Choice Scarf on him, that's going to work too for a faster late game cleaner. Uh, but yeah, Choice Item on Star Raptor is mostly the way to go because He's got really good speed and really good attack. And if you run that on him, you're going to power through teams at late game and kind of in the middle of the game too. Uh, and then Chestnut, I've had some experience using in UU. Uh, usually run him with a Rocky Helmet or Leftovers. In this case, you're going to want Leftovers on probably Clefki and Igaslash or Gothitelle. Um, so you might not be able to run Leftovers on Chestnut. But he does really well with a Rocky Helmet. And you can run uh, a bunch of different things on him. He's a very good utility Pokemon. Bulletproof makes him immune to things like Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, Focus Blast, those kinds of moves. Uh, and he has really, really high physical defense, so he can take anything physically defensively. Uh, Spikes is good on him. It's his only hazard that he can set up. Uh, but it's definitely useful to get a layer or two of Spikes out there if you can. Leechy keeps him healthy uh, since he doesn't have leftovers. Uh, and can keep the other team, you know, losing health and having to switch out a lot. Spiky Shield is a really interesting move. Uh, if anyone doesn't know about it, basically it's Protect, but if they use a move uh, that does physical contact to Chesnaut when he uses Spiky Shield, it hurts them, like Iron Barbs or Rocky Helmet hurt. Uh, Spiky Shield does the same thing. And I don't know if Rocky Helmet adds onto it when you use Spiky Shield, but... If they're hitting you, if they can only hit you with physical moves, Rocky Helmet and Spiky Shield are going to whittle them down. And, uh, and then for your actual attacking moves, you can use Drain Punch, you can use Seed Bomb, you can use Hammer Arm, Wood Hammer. He has a bunch of good stab moves that you can use. I chose Drain Punch just because that's going to keep him healthy as long as possible and still do okay damage since he has pretty decent attack stat. So anything else on that team, Richard? I don't think so. Um... That seems to have been about everything that we could cover with him. Yeah, your, slide, your strategy on that one, I think, was Thunder Wave? Uh, I think so. <laughs> Thunder Wave and Iga Slash. Yeah, those are going to be your big two things. You have Iga Slash on your team, and you have Pokemon that can support him 
really, really well. All right, the last team that we have this week is DJ Challingsworth with Swana Lake. Uh, I had the pleasure of battling him yesterday. We had to do our week two game early, so I've had some experience with his team. Uh, he has on his team Brelum, Rotom W, Volcarona, Fortress, Honchcrow, Crocodile, Miltank, Rhyperior, and Pikachu. Uh, his first four selections were Breloom, Rotom W, Volcarona, and Fortress. And when I saw that at first, I was like, huh, first of all, it's a really good team, really good core. I like that a lot. Uh, but that sounds really familiar. Why does that sound familiar? And then I thought about it, and the reason it sounds very familiar is because we've seen a team very similar to this before. <laughs> <laughs> so we've seen Missy in the first season uh, when she was doing some art. She had a team of Volcarona, Fortress, Rotom W, Breloom, and then Quagsire and Gardevoir. But the first four picks for uh, DJ were all the same as missy's picks in season one so we've seen this team before she did really really well that season um so it'll probably work out for dj too but it's just kind of funny that both of them ended up picking basically the same pokemon so what kind of thoughts have you got on this one richard uh aside from the fire water grass core plus fortress that was about it actually um you have Honchkrow. Crocodile, Miltank, and Rhyperior to kind of rotate between those last two Pokemon. And, and Pikachu. Are we really going to use Pikachu? If Are he doesn't use Pikachu at some point in this season, I'm going to be upset. Okay. Run, run him with a light ball. You could, you could run Thunder Wave on him, Richard. Why wouldn't you use him? I, I, I think this team could be Thunder Wave-less. No, I, I, I've actually seen him. He's been running Thunder Wave on Miltank. Uh, it's a great effect. He's been running Thunder Wave and Heal Bell on Miltank, and it's, it's been pretty useful, actually. So he does have Thunder Wave besides Pikachu, so you're right, Pikachu might not be necessary on this one. The last time Miltank was used was my friend in Season 2, uh, Jordan. I think it was the Whiffly Tufts. Uh, okay. Focused on Attract with Miltank, <laughs> and it never worked. <laughs> Attract can either be the most frustrating or the most useless status. It's essentially just worse confuse. But for some reason, in-game, it like always hits and you never break through it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I got to battle him. So I, I have a couple thoughts on this team. Um, Breloom, Rotom W, and Volcarona are all really good offensive Pokemon. Um, Rotom W is a little bit defensive as well as Vol Volcarona. Uh, and Rotom W and Volcarona work really well together. Any grass type attacks coming at Rotom W, Volcarona, Fortress, and Breloom can suck up. Uh, any water or flying attacks coming at Volcarona or Breloom, uh, flying attacks coming at Breloom, uh, Rotom W can deal with those well. Um, he mentioned to me he was having some trouble with flying Pokemon and ghost Pokemon. Uh, Rotom W can deal pretty well with flying Pokemon still for the Talon Flame can't touch it. Um, you know. We can't use Mega Pinsir in this league, but he can't touch it either. He he deals really well with the strong flying Pokemon. Uh, and Ghosts, he does have a couple options to deal with. He has been running uh, Breloom, Rotom W, Volcarona, Fortress, Rhyperior, and Miltank. Um, but he does have the option to run either Crocodile or Honchkrow in that slot for Rhyperior. Uh, and that's going to give you a lot easier time against Ghosts uh, if you can get some knockoffs out there with Crocodile. Uh, or, you know, you can even pursue with him. Uh, you can Sucker Punch or knock off with Honchkrow, and they can deal with Ghosts a little bit better than the rest of his team can. Um, yeah, he has Fortress. That was his fourth pickup, which was a really uh, wise choice to get Fortress, not only for his defensive capabilities and his ability to set up hazards, but because he can rapid spin uh, and keep Volcarona healthy. And once you have Volcarona on your team, you need something that can get hazards off the field, or else he's not an effective Pokemon. Um, but Fortress was a great pickup by him. I think that was really excellent draft strategy. Uh, and I think, yeah, I think he's got a solid team here. It's capable of dealing with a lot of threats. Uh, on the team builder that I did, he has excellent defensive coverage um 
mentioned, a little bit weak to fire, a little bit weak to flying, and has trouble getting through ghosts, even though he resists them well. Um, but I see dark green over here for the most part. He doesn't have a lot that he's really weak to defensively. Got, again, a ton of immunities. Ice does nothing to him, which is actually really rare for a team. And yeah, he's, he's got a pretty solid defensive team on his hands. So if we go to his team, uh, some of the sets that I recommended for him, he's been using the Technician Burloom set, I believe, that has Bolt Seed and Mock Punch and Rock Tomb and all those good things. DJ, I want to see you go old school with Breloom. Uh, I want to see you use the Substitute Focus Punch set if you get a chance to use it. Uh, he has a Toxic Orb, uh, and with Poison Heal, he's recovering 12% a turn. Uh, if you can get a Leech Seed out, he's recovering 25% a turn. You get free Substitutes that they can't do anything about until they switch out. Um, if you get free Substitutes, if you put a Pokemon to sleep with Spore, you get Substitute in front of you. You can fire off free focus punches, and focus punch coming off a 394 base attack stab hurts a hell of a lot. Um, so this was an old school set back in fourth gen that was always so frustrating. If he comes in on a Pokemon that he can spore or substitute on, he hurts a lot, and it's pretty hard to break through actually if he gets a leech seed out there too. Um, I know he's been running choice scarf, road and wash again. Red and Wash has a lot of options. Uh, you can run Physically Defensive, or you can run Choice Scarf, whatever you want to run. Uh, with Fortress, obviously you're going to want Rapid Spin. Uh, you can run Stealth Rocks. Uh, and I've seen some people in past seasons run Volt Switch on Fortress, which I think is a good idea because it can get you out of there as soon as your spinning's done, as soon as your Stealth Rocks are set up. Um, but yeah, Fortress can run as a Physical Wall, or... If you invest special defense on him, he's actually much harder to take down uh, if you don't have a fire move handy. And then we talked a little bit about Crocodile. Uh, Crocodile can run uh, an effective choice band or choice scarf set. You can run Intimidate or Moxie. If you really want to sweep with him, you can run Moxie. Uh, if you you know, are just looking to get him in and deal with uh, some physical threats and just keep him in, keep him around for the long game. Intimidate is always a good ability. Uh, with a choice band set, you can run Earthquake, Knockoff. Stone Edge is going to help you deal with those flying types a little bit better, and Pursuit is going to help you deal with some of the weakened uh, Pokemon out there or some weak ghosts like Gengar, uh, you know, Jellicent, uh, any, anything that's going to be trying to get out of there once you switch Crocodile in to take a hit like a ghost hit, a dark hit, or a psychic hit. Uh, choice band works well, makes his power go up to really high levels, um, and his speed's already pretty decent. But if you're trying to sweep, you can run Moxie and Choice Scarf, uh, and that can actually get him to get through a really solid sweep endgame with Knockoff or Earthquake. Um, and then Miltank, keep on keeping on with the set you've been running. Um, I'm not going to reveal that for too long because I know you've been running it and you don't want everyone talking about your sets, but I don't know. He had a really solid team. Um, I got a lucky sweep on him. Uh, I managed to avoid a Hydro Pump from his Rotom Wash and got a really lucky sweep, but his team is scary. His team has a lot of potential. Um, any number of Pokemon on his team can set up and sweep. Uh, so yeah, I think he has a, a really solid team. I think he's I think DJ has been on the rise for the past couple of years. I've talked to him a lot after our battles, um, and he's he's getting into the top tier of players here. Uh, he's getting really good at drafting, and he's a solid player, so I think he's got a good shot this year. How's he doing so far this season? After our battle, I think he's one and two. But okay. again, I got really lucky in our battle. so it's, a, it's still very early in the season anyway. Yeah, his his whole division I think was one and one after week one, so he's yeah he's he's in a very competitive division, but definitely winnable division too. So yeah. Any last thoughts on his team? No, uh, I saw eight nine if you're including Pikachu Pokemon. I saw a good core, and that was effectively all I could really see out of it. Um, well balanced overall, and. Yeah, that's really all I have to say about it. All right. Okay, well, that should do us for the week then. Um, 
If you have any comments that you would like to share with us, again, please feel free. Uh, we like hearing feedback from you guys. We like knowing that you guys are enjoying this segment. Uh, next week, uh, week three, we'll be covering... All of um, the admins plus Pingle. <laughs> yes. We will be covering Michael Mealy with uh, Mighty Sidex of Anaheim, Jeremy Temple with the Golden City War Turtles, or Golden State War Turtles, whatever they are actually called, uh, Seth Graham with Team Nohawk, and Pingle with Team Rally Fortify. So look forward to that next week. Uh, we're getting into, into some of the big winners of the past PBFs, some of the admins. So look forward to some analysis and hopefully a little bit of snark then. All right. So we will see you guys. What was that? That it'll be the week of shame. Yeah. You know, I, I think I shamed Black and sufficiently for everyone. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I don't think I need to shame anyone else but Black, I really. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That, it. that is it for us this week. Uh, podcast might be a little bit later next week because I'll be out for work. But we will see you next week. And until then, enjoy the league and go win some battles. Thanks, guys. See ya.